So as you may or may not know, last year's Tom Cruise freak show known as Universal's attempted reboot of The Mummy was a critical and commercial flop, with the future of Universal's plans for a full-fledged reboot of the Universal Monsters mythology being called into question. So I was met with some surprise when I found out that they were still making a licensed video game for it, and that surprise became excitement when I then learned that The Mummy Demastered, as it was going to be called, was being developed by none other than WayForward Technologies. It's probably no secret that WayForward Technologies is one of my favourite video game companies in the world, being the creators of the Shantae series, Mighty Switch Force and DuckTales Remastered, among other such awesome games. So naturally I was excited as heck when I saw the first trailer for The Mummy Demastered, but now that it's been out for a while, it's time to assess how well WayForward have used that movie license, and we'll find that out by asking the big question. What's so good about... I'm going to diverge from my usual format and talk about the gameplay of this game first. I'd hesitate to call this game a Metroidvania, purely because that word doesn't really capture all that the Mummy Demaster tries to be. I'd prefer to call it a Controidvania, owing to the very obvious run and gun influence on this title's gameplay on top of the Metroidvania elements. It's got all the Metal Sluggy Contra hallmarks, the running and gunning, the 40 degree angle shooting, the super cool and super fun to use weapons, you name it. Alongside these, there's also some special abilities you can unlock, like hanging on ceilings, increased jump height and run speed, among others. It also has the elements of your typical Metroidvania, the big open map, health tanks and new weapons hidden around the map to find, as well as relics to discover, which if I remember rightly serve little purpose other than just to be a collectible. So suffice to say, the basics of the Metroidvania and run and gun formula are both there, with a few little additions for added spice, and well, it works. There's not really much more to say on it. The shooting feels nice and fast paced, the exploring is interesting, and generally speaking it's really, really enjoyable, though otherwise I admit perhaps not overly remarkable, and as it is with a fair few Metroidvanias, it is quite irritating when you lose 5 minutes of gameplay because you fell down too far. Amidst this, there is one mechanic that really stood out to me, and that is what happens when you run out of health. If you're killed, then your body gets possessed and resurrected as a zombie. You then have to return to where you died and kill your previous self to reclaim your weapons, special abilities and health upgrades. When I first saw this mechanic, I must say I found it to be a really, really cool addition. Wafer would have managed to take something as taken for granted as dying in a game and put a unique spin on it, which also happens to fit in really well with the game's universe and mythos, and for that I have to applaud them for their ingenuity. As you can also probably tell just by looking at it, the art style too takes inspiration from SNES-era Metroidvanias and running guns. As a matter of fact, some of the enemies look like they're pretty much straight out of Castlevania. This isn't exactly new ground for WayForward, since they used it back in the Shantae series, and here it serves very much the same purpose. That being to give the game a nice little helping of charm, and to hark back even further to the Metroidvanias of yore, and I'd say that, yeah, it succeeds in that regard too. I mean, I'm not personally a big fan of the old Metroidvanias, but I can appreciate that this game does a pretty good job in calling back to them, and the art style is only one way in which it does this. So we've discussed the gameplay mechanics and art style, but by now you may be wondering why I've put off talking about this game's story in favour of the former. I did this for the simple reason that there isn't really that much story to talk about. You're an agent of the Prodigam organisation, who has been dispatched to find and kill Amanet, the recently resurrected Egyptian pharaoh who has started raising an army of the dead to serve her. And that's pretty much it. You shoot some enemies, you kill a few big bad bosses, you die a few times, you kill your previous self a few times, and story-wise there isn't really much else to say. And I'd say that this is actually to the game's overall benefit, since, as I've just said, this is clearly a game which intends to emulate older Metroidvanias, which in themselves didn't usually have much going in the way of story on the surface either, or at least as far as I can remember, and thus focuses more on the gameplay experience than on telling a story. By that virtue, I'd say that the story, meager as it is, does its job, in the sense that it gives all the action a context and provides some justification for the aforementioned death mechanic, so honestly, I can't really criticise it that much. Now, if you've seen my previous video on the Shantae series, you will know just how much I love the soundtrack in that game. In fact, WayForward has a bit of a habit of giving their games really, really awesome soundtracks. And with The Mummy Demastered, that hasn't changed one iota. Interestingly, instead of WayForward mainstay Jake Kaufman doing the music, it's a new guy called Gavin Monomo Allen, whose only prior game soundtracks seem to have been from rather obscure indie releases. Nevertheless, Monomo does a great job with this game's soundtrack, in fact it's one of the main things that got me excited for this game in the first place. The atmospheric sound blends gorgeously with the creepy setting, and I really, really like the boss theme in particular. Just listen to it.
If you care to nitpick, it is a bit weird having 8-bit inspired music but 16-bit inspired graphics, but the solution there is to stop thinking about it and just enjoy the banging music. So far then, the game is pretty good, but alas, I do have criticisms to make, and I think I can put them all under one very big, very damning header. Aside from the usual Metroidvania problems of it being very easy to get lost or stuck, which I can brush off easily enough, this one thing drags it down for me in a really, really violent way. And here it is. I don't know if it's just me, but I found this game to be really, really, really difficult. It starts off easy enough, guides you in all well and good, and then around about the second boss, the difficulty spikes so hard that it feels like a wallop in the face. And I'm not talking about the good, satisfying kind of difficulty, I'm talking classic Nintendo difficulty. The irritating kind of difficulty. The hyperdimension Neptunia kind of difficulty. It's brought about in this instance by a combination of lots of fast moving and highly damaging enemies, lots of very small platforms, lots of very long drops, I think I mentioned those two earlier as well, and lots of Castlevania star knockback, all of which put together makes for an extremely annoying combination, especially when some of these enemies can move and sometimes shoot through terrain, whereas you can't. You know the enemies in a game are overpowered when they are harder to deal with than the bosses. And I know I said earlier that I liked the death mechanic, but if you die in the wrong place, it makes the difficulty even worse, since the more you keep dying in one area, the more enemies you have to contend with, armed with nothing but a pea shooter and a single measly health tank which gets stripped away in mere seconds. And to ice the cake, the only way to restore your health is to do copious amounts of boring grinding. Suffice to say, the difficulty does feel a bit artificial quite often, and it puts a really big dent in an otherwise really fun game, but I will begrudgingly admit that this too adds to the whole sort of classic Metroidvania feel of the entire thing. This is not a game that holds your hand like most modern games do. This is a game that does it the 90s way. This is a game you have to invest in and really get to know in order to really enjoy it. I'll say this though, the enemies may be annoying as hell, but the bosses, while still quite hard, are super fun to kick the hell out of, and it's really satisfying when you do beat them. To wrap up this whole review, heh <laughs> get it? Mummy, wrap up. Ultimately, I was a tiny little bit disappointed with The Mummy Demastered. It's not bad, not by a long shot. In fact, it's a really, really fun marriage of the Metroidvania and run and gun genres, as well as a really well used movie license in its own right. But it's not quite as enjoyable as I had my hopes up for. So, should you buy it? Well, honestly, I'd say sure, why not? Especially if you're a fan of the old Metroidvania Masters. It might not be as enjoyable as I'd hoped, but it is still enjoyable. I'd honestly rather play this than watch Tom Cruise do the same thing. It's got the gameplay and unique mechanics to make it a fun enough experience, and the hair-ripping difficulty genuinely is the only thing that brings it down, though, heck, maybe you like that kind of thing, in which case this game's perfect for you. I've been Deuterium the Sentient Mattress, and that is what's so good about the Mummy Demastered. Wayforward Technologies, I love you, but why must you be so sadistic? Is my sanity the price for the review key you sent me? But seriously, thanks a lot for the review key, I really do love you guys, and thank all of you for watching! That is all for this video, as ever be sure to like, share and subscribe, join my Discord server if you like, leave a comment if you liked it, leave a comment if you didn't like it, either way it means a lot to me, and I'll see you all next time! Ta-ta!